this rather exciting package landed on my doorstep this month. Inside it is a highly anticipated product, the Brino BCC Construction Time Lapse Camera Kit. Hi everyone, I'm Jacinta Leong. I've used Brino time lapse cameras for over a decade now to record the construction of movie sets. This video is not a review. It's purely an unboxing. So, let's have a look at the package. It uh, looks very eco-friendly to me. Not like those glossy, overly slick packages that cost more than the product inside. The uh, writing on the outside is very legible and neat. The contents, time-lapse camera, the TLC 300. Resolution 1080p, power source and weight. There's also a waterproof housing in here and a clamp pod. Okay. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ah, so we have one box. Two boxes. Let's open the, the larger one first. Okay, we have the Bruno T1 takeaway clamp pod. And silica gel. We have uh, an Oki strap. These are really good for um, tying around uneven objects like tree branches and columns, you know, something that's just too big for um, a clamp. And we have four batteries. A micro SD card and an adapter and lens caps. Well, that must mean that the camera is inside this one here. Have I opened it upside down? Of course I have. Oh! We have a quick guide here. So. Its shape is like the the TLC two hundred or and the two hundred Pro. Ah, okay. So the camera's in the housing. Very good. Saving space. Okay. Let's set it up. So this is not a review, it's just an unboxing to see what the contents of the box are. Put the SD card in here. Put the batteries in as well. Open the card. Have the gold contacts points facing towards you. Close that there. Put the batteries in. When the camera is facing towards you, you put the positive end down first, going left to right, positive up second, positive down third, and positive up for the fourth one, and close it. You switch it on. 
I, I actually don't quite mind having this on switch that rotates because it's a definite on or off whereas the other cameras that you press unless you um, unless you see the LED blinking you actually don't know if the camera's on and then we can record okay recording okay to cancel the camera housing let's put that in it says um oh you know what i like with about these cameras is this lens rotates you can have the camera lying down and point it this way so you can fine tune the angle that you want uh, here we'll just put the lens uh, at 90 degrees to the body so that when we put it into the casing it won't uh, fail. Let's put that in. This camera has an interchangeable lens. You can unscrew it. You can take the lens off and there are at least two other Brino uh, zoom lenses available. So that's why they have this cap here to protect that side and this one for this side. Before putting it into the case just make sure it's at 90 degrees to the body so that it doesn't foul. It's a snug fit and you close the latches. Uh, make sure that the latch loop is on the outside not, not on the inside. I've done that a few times, closing it in gives me the... And then the clamp pod, beautiful, undo this to take the mount out. You can uh, put it into the housing, uh, using a coin to tighten it. I've got a... Um, a bulldog clip also works well. This is a really versatile little clamp pod. Doing this. Oh, so it's saying it has 360 degrees worth of movement. There we go all the way around. We can stand it like this and then you unwind the handle to open the jaws to clamp it onto a pipe or piece of timber. There's a clamp pod user guide here as well in great detail and here are some codes here which you can scan which will allow you to access manuals uh, allow you to register and uh, have a look at some other resources there now I'm going to take this out of the case I've been a little bit excited about the TL3300 so Press OK. I'm going to have a look at the menu. So you can do interval recording. 
Here in the interval menu, you can select the amount of time between each shot. In custom, you can choose your own uh, strange interval. Oh, exit. Wow, this menu is so much better. It's a huge improvement on the TLC 200, which has the same shape as this. But here you can actually read the menu item uh, that's next on the screen instead of scrolling to, unless you've memorized all the other items on the menu on the TLC 200, uh, you don't know what is coming up. Here's the schedule. If I set it on, it's really cool. I could have the um, camera start at six in the morning and go until 5.30 at night. This is a great feature because you save on battery, you save on Oh wow, it's got daily schedule. You save on battery, you save on card space, and you save on your editing as time as well. Just make sure that if the team is working on a Saturday, you do check that. But I'll uncheck that, save. Wow, that's cool. And exit. And now I can scroll to the next item without having to go back to the beginning and scroll from the first the first um, the first item on the menu exposure saturation sharpness focus what's that oh okay oh wow because the focus menu was somewhere else in the um, in the in the TLC 200. I'll just exit out of that. We can deal with that later. And I'll exit. Wow, this is, this saves a lot of headaches. Advanced exposure mode day, daytime, twilight and night. I'll just stay on daytime. Flicker filter. You've got a range of hertz there file split off or on daily that's handy because otherwise it could just keep going and then you, you might have you know three files that went over five days so it's not easy to separate the files from the days I generally play back at 30 frames per second because I believe it's smoother LED on, that's when um, this light turns on and you know it's recording. Timestamp, I love putting the timestamp on. Language, oh. English, Chinese, I suppose, Asian, Dutch, French, Spanish, Italian, another Asian language. I'll choose English, yes. It was probably the default anyway. Oh, the time. Keeps going battery type. Alkaline, nickel metal hydride, or lithium. Uh, the Toshibas were alkaline, that's why it's um, default there. System info, we've got the firmware version. I don't know what ASIC stands for or micro or blur, but um, you can jump onto the Brino website and update the firmware uh, every, every few months, I think. Format the SD card. It's probably a good practice too. That's a new one in there. Format, yes. Reset camera. Now I've gone through all the settings and back. Exit. Oh, advanced. Yeah, right. Did we go through, oh yeah, all four pages, good. Exit and scroll, oh okay, great. Exit, 
Great, and the readout here shows you how much battery you have, the size of the card, the fact that it's on and that you've selected customized interval recording. Oh, another info page. At a glance, oh wow, that's really handy. Next, two of two tells you the interval. Wow, this is all the settings at a glance. It's like a ready reckoner. Well, that is fantastic. That is amazing. Okay, well, that was the unboxing of the BCC 300 construction bundle. Okay, I should have stopped at the unboxing, but I'm just so curious about the quality of the footage that we'll get from the TLC 300, especially in comparison to its predecessor, the TLC 200, which was 1280 by 720. This is HD, so uh, I hope it, um, it uh, meets expectations. This scene has a variety of good time-lapse material, including tides, meteorology, skyscrapers, traffic and boats. So we start with a spectacular sunrise, in-roll moody clouds, and at the top left-hand corner there, crepuscular rays. As the light becomes brighter, we see through the water to the sandbars, which are also being revealed as the tide goes out. The direction of the current is also obvious. This is taking an image every 30 seconds. The brightness continues as the planet turns and the sun casts the shadows of the apartment block. The tide rises, the stranded boats float again, and the sandbars disappear. It's a daytime setting for the exposure. As we lose light, the camera doesn't cope well here, but it's not meant to, because there is a twilight setting which deals better with the fading light. As twilight is a brief amount of time, just have the intervals much closer so you get a longer video that is also smoother. Now, by 7 p.m., the twilight setting is struggling with the darkness, which is why there is a night setting. It does quite a good job with daylight and dusk anyway, and it maintains fidelity at 7 p.m. and beyond when it is completely dark. Those grainy red dots are greatly reduced and the pretty lights of the skyscrapers and boats are able to be appreciated. This night video is much smoother as it took me a couple of goes to realize that the 10 second interval gave a smoother and more pleasing video. To summarize with a comparison, here's 5 p.m. at daytime setting, twilight setting, and night setting. Also, 6 p.m. at daytime setting, twilight setting, and night setting. And finally, 7 p.m. when it's completely dark for daytime setting, twilight setting, and night setting. Here's the postscript. I missed a couple of items in the unboxing. A link to apply to the Priority Club and a link to register for free warranty extension. Also, there's a handy dandy sticker to notify passers-by that a recording is in progress. Also, note that the housing allows power to the camera through this port. Well, I hope this unboxing has been helpful. This is courtesy of Team Brino in Taiwan, so a thank you and shout out to Gary Chow, who has been very kind to me over the years, listening to me when I send wish lists. I think he heard me. Also a big thank you to Tim Kuo for sending this kit across. You can contact Brino via social media, email and telephone. Thanks so much everyone. Au revoir.